Hi, I'm Eric Oaken and uh, this is a video I'm making about why Narvik wasn't fortified in 1940. First, we are going to talk about uh, the building of the defenses in northern Norway before 1940. Uh, they all started from uh, about the turn of the century, uh, from 1905 to 1940, uh, and it's a complex co uh, process uh, because uh, uh, a lot happened and uh, even more didn't happen. Uh, in particular, the emergency preparedness at the end of the 1930s gave grave consequences for the actions um, in the early war after the, uh, April the 9th, uh, 1940. Uh, the increased interest from the parliament, uh, the Storting, and Swedish authorities about the lack of the defensive was a common issue by uh, both countries because both countries saw the same flaws and the same apparent weaknesses in the Norwegian defenses or the, the total lack of Norwegian defenses. Shipping of iron ore had common defensive interests in both countries and at the end of the 19th century there was no military organization in northern Norway except for Vardehus fastening, uh, which derives from uh, the, uh, the uh, 18th century. Uh, and by that it's uh, described as a pile of earth in the lands beyond common sense. Uh, this is not my word, it's uh, the word of the uh, Arbeide Blei, the, uh, the labor um, magazine, 1937. So. There was an apparent uh, awareness of this uh, issue, but uh, the, me the um, measurement, the um, following actions by the government uh, did not occur until it was too late. The development of the military or organization after conscription cannot be understood by traditional threat assessments alone. And therein lies uh, the issue of Northern Norway. Uh, the uh, uh, three northernmost countries needed development both in infrastructure, there was actually no, uh, it was actually the lack, or even the total lack of proper roads, even connected roads. Uh, Norway uh, has always been a nation which um, used, its highway was the ocean. Uh, the highway uh, and the mar maritime uh, uh, activity was far higher, but um, in northern Norway there was no, uh, there hasn't early been uh, a dire need of roads, but um, it came pretty apparent by the uh, by the late by the 1920s, uh, the 1920s and 30s that there was an apparent lack, lack of, of infrastructure. And um, the different, the integration of different ethnic groups into the great Norwegian society. Uh, this has something to do with, um, it was a complex picture of uh, very few people living there. Uh, the, you had the Sami population, the, the Kvin population. They uh, didn't. Um, uh, become integrated, the, uh, the Norwegian society, the great Norwegian society wanted to be integrated. Even if it is in uh, hindsight, it uh, is seen as wrong. Conscription was used to integrate the northern societies into national common culture. The Norwegian armed forces was tasked to protect important institutions against socio-economic unrest. The inner threat was seen as uh, rebellious workers with socialist and communist tendencies. Another task was fishery and maritime commerce protection, uh, controversies with grey powers uh, about borders, hunting and fishing. 
You had the Soviet Union um, almost bordering to the east. Uh, you had Finland uh, in between, but uh, the, uh, the sea borders were... Uh, the Soviet Union was a frequent visitor to northern Norway. Uh, and uh, the Russian is still today, even uh, if you have differences. Challenges the low, uh, uh, a po low population to build a conscription army, very bad communication, the lack of proper connected roads, large area with mostly a thin coastline uh, with the border, uh, with the border mountains, mountains, with Sweden making the border. So the conclusion is, uh, building the northern defences and defence policy was not only a military issue, it was also a question about social economic development and the great need of building infrastructure. You have the external threat, uh, which uh, by the 1920s and uh, certainly by the 1930s, uh, was uh, our big neighbor, the Soviet Union. But it wasn't considered a threat uh, before the Winter War with Finland. Control of Eastern Finnmark and Ofoten was considered of importance for the Russians and therefore also her enemies. Future conflicts were likely to lead to conflict on Norwegian soil by a great power. Uh, an isolated, uh, isolated attack by the USSR was unlikely, but the adversaries could do so. Germany was seen as a, such a threat and showed certain interest in the area. They had several, uh, they, they had several expeditions with uh, warships in the area. And uh, there was also a lot of uh, intelligence gathering uh, and spying going on, also in the Navik area, uh, in the um, decade before the war, and uh, especially up to uh, from 1936 to 1940. This threat was met with different forms of a system of protection of neutrality which basically means uh, it's a low-cost um, uh, conscription uh, army. You send up, to, you scatter thinly uh, about uh, the area to avoid when, an, uh, and, and the thought behind this is when an enemy attacks, he, wi he will be engaged wherever he lands, which uh, triggers uh, the unusual response, uh, we are attacked. Uh, so this is, um, is, well, you can see later, it's uh, not so, so wise. <laughs> the internal threat, uh, this comes uh, to um, uh, the actual use of the uh, military forces, uh, the Norwegian military forces. The army and military organization was also used to, pr to pr protect important institutions and the Norwegian authorities from its own people. Uh, and this was namely the Bolshevik and socialist threat, uh, which was perceived by uh, the government of the t time. Uh, we are talking about the 20s and the 1930s here. The Labour Party had been a member of Comintern uh, until 1923 uh, and still was considered a communist party and with communist tendencies, a communist uh, uh, association by the election in 1927. Uh, it is debatable if the steel was in the, if the steel was in the 1930s. Uh, this is uh, important to understand why the Labour Party policy formed in the 1930s they perceived the uh, Norwegian armed forces as a threat. Uh, we are coming back to this and uh, a couple of very nice examples of a uh, well, very certain example of why. Uh, from 1933 the Labour Party adopted a more parliamentarian policy and forming a government in 1935 
it was definitely a social democratic party. The need to rearm and build a valid defense was actually acknowledged in 1936, uh, but there was internal resistance to rearming uh, following the, uh, um, the, the, necessa the, the necessary funds, uh, funding. The Minister of Defense, Oscar Torp, was an anti-military politician. Rearmament got on the way some month later, however, in 1936. Sixth Division with uh, the HQ in Harsta in northern Norway got a priority. And uh, now we're coming to the conflict uh, which actually made this. Um, uh, moving this around. There we go. The Menster conflict is uh, a reason uh, it comes from the, the following the Great Depression, significant uh, call, uh, significant industri industrial tension erupted to a rebellion in 1935 against pay cuts and lockouts. This conflict uh, escalated between the police and workers. Uh, even the King's Guard Company was sent. Telemark Battalion was mobilized, but never put into action. The Navy sent four warships, included uh, coastal battleships, uh, the Norge and uh, a, a couple of uh, uh, others. Um, I can show you the model here. Uh, this is a model of, uh, of this is actually the uh, neither is the the uh, HMS um, Glatton. This is um, uh, this is a, a model from uh, the later larger uh, coastal defense ship. Uh, they were sent in to uh, deal with uh, the striking workers. Uh, luckily, nev uh, this never come to any bloody uh, conflict. Uh, but uh, the whole, uh, the whole um, episode, the whole conflict, uh, was uh, administered by the Minister of Defense, uh, which someone might know, Vidkun Krisling. Uh, he got uh, both appraisal and blame for his handling of the conflict, uh, and uh, this uh, is of course depending on what side they were on. Uh, but the results of this conflict and uh, the, the later um, uh, agitation, this is uh, the reason why the Labour Party has uh, such a um, uh, bad uh, uh, bad uh, background story with the armed forces and uh, they never trusted them until uh, e even up to 1940. So uh, this is about um, defending Northern Norway. The characteristics about Northern Norway is that its depth is very shallow. It includes practically only the coast. Behind this there is a wasteland. There's no room for two lines behind each other. This is a message, message sent uh, 13th of January 1937 uh, with the name The Current Defense of Northern Norway. So it's um, uh, the, the, uh, land, the Norwegian uh, coast is, um, as it's described here, is very shallow. We can't really uh, make um, uh, a defensive depth uh, and uh, the naval side, we are coming back to that, is um, also lacking because of uh, the resources, the supplies. Uh, the big problem in Northern Norway is uh, getting the supplies through. Uh, you actually needed a stock about 100% of the supply they needed uh, for the coming weeks. This explains why both Central Army Command and local was more interested in developing communication supply capacity rather than uh, the military capacity.
it was difficult having an army presence in the exposed area. It, it, difficult, it was practically impossible because you would run out of uh, resources very quickly and uh, you basically need uh, your force to surrender if you can't uh, do anything or, um, or, or uh, retreat. The period up to 1940 was in reality an establishment phase for the armed forces in Northern Norway. Therefore, they had to prioritize developing a basic organization over military preparedness. Uh, so we're coming to the Navy. Uh, the, the Royal Norwegian Navy had no, no permanent organization in Northern Norway until the end of the 1930s. Uh, the Coast Guard vessels Fritjof Nansen and Michael Sars, uh, the picture above is of uh, the latter, uh, this was uh, a research ship uh, around 1900, so it's about uh, 40 years old in 1940. And together with uh, eight to ten rented uh, ships patrolled the northern coast of Svalbard and Barents Sea during the 1930s. This is a huge area uh, and you had eight to ten ships uh, together with the guard vessels. Uh, that is a handful, uh, a dozen of ships which has to cover a lot. Uh, uh, and uh, anyways, it, uh, the Nordcap actually uh, did a very significant thing, which uh, also, uh, also uh, influenced uh, the battle, the second and third battle of Narvik, because uh, she sank the uh, tanker Kattegat, Kattegat. Uh, and uh, the, the picture below is uh, of Nordcap, not Kattegat. Um, and uh, uh, they were commissioned in 1937. So those ships, even though they were um, not actually uh, proper warships, uh, they did have a very important role in the early days of 1940. The Navy organization is uh, that in northern Norway uh, it got its own naval district from 1915 and this was uh, discontinued in 1925. The, the trend here will we'll also show the same. Uh, during the mid-20s uh, Norway uh, cut back really hard on military expenditure and it never really got up until 19 th from 1936 1937 and uh, the panic uh, 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 mobilization in 1939 but uh, then it was too late the unfortified naval station ramsund is still in use throughout this period this is important because uh, ramsund was uh, a very important location um, and um, uh, it is basically where all the uh, naval defense was uh, going to be built out of. And naval operations in northern Norway was difficult because there was no lack of support facilities of, or more than, uh, modern infrastructure. It uh, lacked a proper supply chain sustaining naval operations. And as late as uh, 1934, there were were no docks or repair facilities in the 850 nautic, mi nautic mile long coast able to take any ships larger than uh, Heimdall at 670 tons. This uh, clearly shows uh, what the length of the Norwegian coast is uh, uh, starting to show uh, when you are going to, uh, when you are talking about uh, the supply chain. And uh, of course the uh, issues still with us today. 
Naval presence in northern Norway could only do temporary patrols because of this. Uh, you couldn't do larger repairs, as mentioned, and uh, you needed a much better organization if you are going to be stationing uh, uh, warships to actually do something up in the north. The fortifications uh, all, um, was already from the 1830s. There was no plans. Uh, there was plans for uh, fortifications in northern Norway. Uh, this picture is from uh, Vardehus, uh, which uh, is about the only uh, fortress uh, in before uh, 1940. Not until the railroad with Sweden, it was Swedish iron ore, was constructed. Uh, further plans for fortification in the area between Ramsund and Narvik was created uh, around the turn of the century. The disagreement in the early 1900s about the plans be, uh, between the navy and army about the fortresses covering Narvik harbor itself or the fjord passage, this led to the Storting, the parliament, refusing to fund anything. So this is a classical situation. Uh, where the army and the navy uh, disagrees uh, just about everything. It wasn't, uh, of course, the levels of uh, mutual love uh, like the uh, um, uh, the uh, absolute uh, mortal enemies uh, in the Japanese imperial uh, Japanese navy, uh, but it uh, stuck its. Um, uh, it stuck out so that the uh, parliament actually decided to no, we are not going to fund you at all. Uh, so uh, as uh, and in um, as in the later uh, situations, um, it came to nothing. The defense department decided Ramsen is uh, the best suited area. Uh, this is somewhat later uh, and we were talking about from 1912. Uh, Storting and provides funds for naval station in Ramsen with fortifications. Uh, the plan for the defense of Narvik in 1912 uh, it was a fortified station at R Ramsen. You can actually see the uh, Ramsen on the Google map here. This is uh, the current, uh, how uh, it looks uh, up in Ramsen, the current uh, day. Um, this is, um, the, you, you can clear, you can see the two passages uh, here and here. It was about to be fortified and uh, the Germans later fortified here. Uh, the securing of the Ofot Railway, uh, this was another uh, great issue. Uh, the secure, securing the railway from the Swedish border, which is uh, very close to Narvik, uh, so that uh, any foreign uh, adversaries wouldn't be able to uh, easily take it out. Uh, it was going to be fortified with a gun battery of 3 times uh, 15 centimeter of, or 5.9 inches guns uh, placed on the, uh, on the Rams mountain. The gun battery, uh, another gun battery with 2 times uh, quick firing 105 millimeters at 4 Holton. Uh, Fort Holten, uh, that's northern end of Ramsun, that would be about here, uh, blocking the entrance uh, and passage here for any invaders. The naval forces at Ramsun. Ramsun was going to have two submarines. This would be, uh, uh, at this time, uh, this would be, uh, be the A-class submarine built in Germany. Uh, this was the first class of submarine Norway had and it is a very, uh, very up-to-date uh, plan and it's a very strong and good one, if it has been carried out. Uh, it was going to have one deport ship, uh, submarine and um, and torpedo tender also working as mine layer. 
it was going to have four torpedo boats, uh, which was going to be used of the current pool of torpedo boats, mostly uh, older ships uh, made from uh, the newest was about made in the 1900s. And a small a number of mines was to be stored in Ramsund, about uh, 50 in uh, the numbers. So this is actually go a good plan. Uh, it would have been very difficult for an adversary to, um, uh, to go into Narwick uh, at uh, the time in 1912. Uh, it was, would uh, have cost uh, an immense uh, number of cas casualties if uh, they have tried to bypass uh, or being trapped inside of this uh, force. It was a far-sighted plan at the time, uh, and uh, the depth and width of the Offutt Fjord favors a maritime def defense to prevent an intruder of land-based fortifications uh, since the latter is considered to be too expensive if it's going to be effective. Maritime defenses will secure the western flank for the army, allowing time to mobilize the land forces. Uh, you can see the Norwegian torpedo bombs here, uh, just about 1900s, and uh, this is very likely to have been uh, uh, either this class or the, uh, uh, the somewhat earlier class. Uh, at the time, uh, Norway had uh, some very old, uh, even one of the first uh, torpedo boats still in commission. It was uh, made in uh, about 1865. And it still was uh, going strong in uh, the 1912, 1914. So, by 1914, this is a very far-sighted and realistic assessment of a proper defense at the time. But it cost money. And uh, money was uh, something a government or the parliament uh, often wasn't uh, willing to, uh, to pay what it actually costs. And we can see this in the planned expenditure for the Ramsun uh, Naval Station. The planned expenditure was 960,000 for completion, minimum estimation 700,000. So what actually what happened there? Well, uh, the storting then decides uh, it uh, funds the minimum amount of 700,000 uh, because reasons, because it's the cheapest one, of course. And then this project then suffers many uh, exceedances uh, and uh, this um, uh, gallops into uh, um, a reality that shows uh, that the latest stops the funding. Uh, the reality uh, on the other parts also steps in. Uh, the submarine A5 is built in Germany in 1914. So it's not going to <laughs> get to Norway. And uh, the two panzer ships, uh, which is uh, provided to uh, and paid for uh, to bol um, bolster the uh, Norwegian navy, is built in Britain when the war breaks out. And this is again uh, one of them. Uh, this uh, uh, would have been. Uh, if it's uh, ever completed and uh, they leave it to Norway, this is very prob would have very probably been uh, used in Norway in 1940. Uh, Norway uh, herself starts to build submarines, um, but after 1920, uh, a new defense commission um, decides to basically freeze any defense development for the next 20 years. So, up to 1940. The gun battery north of uh, Ramsen at Fort Holten is uh, still under construction in 1917. Uh, it has 205 millimeters, uh, which is uh, about 4 uh, inches, uh, of the HKL-30 gun with an, uh, 110 centimeter or 42 inches searchlight uh, that was placed 
uh, at the stand areas for Holton. Uh, the battery never became operational until the Germans did so after the uh, invasion in 1940. So basically we provided some guns for the Germans to build their forts with. The Germans called the area Ramstad, um, a name which was also used by the Norwegian coastal artillery after war. Uh, this uh, probably comes from the confusion of Ramsund and Ramstad, uh, so, uh, but it stuck, the name stuck. Uh, another 250 mm or 5.9 inches at Ramnes uh, south of Ramsun was planned, uh, but construction stopped in 1920, uh, following the same uh, defense freeze. The guns arrived from Britain and sta uh, sat in storage until 1934, when they were sent to Bergen. The position of the proposed batteries can be seen here. Uh, the Forholten, the Ramstad battery, was supposed to uh, the construction actually started uh, was to stop the, uh, an, any invading force to come through here and down to the Ramsund Naval Station. From the uh, other uh, fjord pass passage, um, the, it was. Um, the Ramnes battery was going to cover the area uh, into uh, Narvik Harbour, uh, which is uh, something around here. Uh, the, the work began, uh, but it was never completed. Uh, however, again, uh, uh, Wittgen Quisling told the Germans that the batteries were in existence. I don't know why he did so, but uh, uh, he caused them to uh, land at uh, the Ramnes battery site and on the other side, uh, the Korsham, uh, the Korsham uh, or Hamnes battery, uh, which was uh, never proposed, never built, there was nothing there, uh, but uh, Wittgen Quisling has told them, so the German landed, landed there in 1940. Uh, expecting to find a gun battery there, um, but they didn't, so they had to build one. And it was built uh, and completed in December 1941, uh, with some uh, delays. Uh, so they got their battery, uh, but uh, a year later. The defense of Narvik uh, from 1937 uh, then it was co uh, considered to be, uh, uh, be needing a rapid response force because an enemy could achieve the goals by simply deploy destroying the harbour facilities for the iron ore transport or parts of the Ofoot railway itself. So this is uh, again back to the lack of defences. Uh, if the original plans have been in order, uh, the uh, uh, Ofoot Railway would have uh, um, uh, several gun batteries uh, uh, along the line uh, and um, actually proper defenses to stop it. Uh, it included an uh, armor railway cart, um, uh, railway wagon. Uh, the rapid response uh, time was on uh, three hours notice. A thought scenario was that uh, Germany needed iron ore the Soviets could uh, threaten the German industry by stopping the transport. An enemy did not need to invade the town to achieve the goals. That means they could uh, simply uh, show up in a uh, uh, naval vessel and bombard the, uh, the uh, city, to bombard the uh, harbor facilities uh, and destroy them. And uh, their goal would have been achieved. Uh, since the coastal artillery guns near Ramsun was not operational, Narvik needed an, uh, an artillery unit. A defense against submarines were needed for the same reasons. The only troops that were actually deployed here were an anti-air unit and uh, two machine gun teams. 
And uh, on the uh, picture here, you can actually see this is from Narvik. And uh, this is also a uh, attachment from Narvik, uh, uh, about the same in 1940. So uh, what they actually ended up with getting was uh, an anti-air unit and two machine guns team, nothing else in defense of Narvik. So why was, wasn't there any fortification at Narvik? Uh, the total lack of fortifications was one of the biggest weaknesses for the defense of Northern Norway in 1940. Uh, building of such uh, fortifications in Ofoten never got top priority, even since the beginning of the 1900s. This issue followed further proposals, uh, and further proposals was raised several times by the military le leadership of both the army and the navy. So, uh, this. Um, uh, problem. The, this persistent problem of funding persisted uh, throughout the time, even in the uh, so-called happy uh, years of uh, actually funding uh, the military uh, from 1912, uh, especially during the First World War from 1914 to 1918, even up to 1920. The Norwegian authorities so, uh, decided that Narvik was removed from the list of priorities locations uh, and guns were sent to Bergen and never replaced. Uh, so this is a co probably comes for the government, from the government, not uh, the, um, the top uh, le uh, leadership of the military. Uh, the Varanger Fjord and the Tromsø area was the priority land defenses uh, area in north. Uh, but those plans uh, also never got carried out before 1940 and uh, then it was too late. Thank you for listening to my uh, video. Um, I hope uh, you had enjoyed and uh, learned something. Uh, hopefully this was uh, information was uh, useful. Uh, here are my sources, and uh, I would also uh, recommend you to follow um, uh, some other uh, channels. Uh, you, uh, you have some great YouTube channels with some excellent historians. Dr. Alexander Clark, he has his uh, channel on YouTube, also on Twitter, and um, uh, he uh, makes a great, uh, great history. Uh, you also have Drakinifel, uh, who has his Five Minutes Guide, his YouTube channel, and he also has his Five Hour uh, Guides uh, or the Dry Dock. Uh, so you should definitely uh, go in and listen to him. And uh, the, the last one is uh, the Army Carriers. Uh, he has a great site about aircraft carriers. If, if you love aircraft carriers, you should definitely check him out because uh, it is uh, all what you want to, uh, to look at is there. Thank you and have a good evening.